Hey, Mech Warriors, welcome to Bad Ben's Battle Mechs. I'm Bad Ben. And today, I want to teach you how to do force creation, how to build a force in Battletech according to the rules in campaign operations. Uh, whoop, which I had open there, which I'm not going to be showing because I think that's. Something you should go and buy yourself. If you want to do this, you should absolutely go, first of all, and get campaign operations. That's where all the rules are, and it'll be much, much easier uh, to follow along with uh, this video if you have it, because I'll be referencing page numbers and so on. Uh, so what are we looking at? We are looking at a table of operations and equipment, the T, O, and E sheet. And this is uh, the sheet where you're going to be recording all of the relevant information to be able to later calculate the um, your m monthly uh, costs and so on. Right? Uh, so... <clears throat> we'll just take a quick look at this sheet, and it starts with subforce. And what this is is so <clears throat> a number of different things can go under subforce. If you have a mech, a single mech, you can write that here. You can write it like, you know, I want a locust one e, and oh, no, and that can be written there. Or um, another thing that can be written here is tech team, for example. So you you can have seven tech teams here, right? Anything that is going to or have uh, ad min administrators, right? They might be put here or a uh, drop ship or a jump ship if you are planning on getting one, which I wouldn't suggest getting one, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, so yeah, this is going to be kind of a diverse column where uh, any, you get any one thing that's costing you money is going to be put in here. Also, if you wanted to put like, um, if you have in your force 20 scorpion tanks, right? You don't have to list each individual one. You can write 20 scorpion tanks, right? You get the idea. So that is subforce. Experience. Uh, this is going to be the experience of the mech warrior, if it's a mech, right? If you have 20 scorpion tanks, it's going to be the experience of all scorpion tanks. If you want your scorpion tanks to have different experience levels, you will have to uh, put them all individually. And as you can see, this um, T, O, and E sheet is a little limited, right? This is the whole size of it. Um, and so I personally, what I like to do is use a spreadsheet like this. This is something that I've made. Um, it's kind of complicated. It has a lot more room. I have a room for a thousand units um, on each page. And I have a lot more information on this here than just the standard force creation worksheet. And uh, that's something I'll get into. That's because there's going to be a lot of information that we're going to have to write down somewhere, not on this sheet, right? There's nowhere on this sheet to say how much money we have, for example, right? <clears throat> so that's going to have to be recorded somewhere. You can just write that on a separate piece of paper. You can make a spreadsheet like I did. Um, or, of course, uh, you'll be able to download my spreadsheet uh, that I've made um, in the descriptions below. So uh, we have subforce, we have experience, then we have ammo tons. 
right? This is going to be how much ammo does that thing use uh, on a monthly basis in peacetime operations. Uh, and that has its own calculation. You basically uh, do a quarter of the ammo and you're only ever using the most basic type of ammo. So, for example, if you have a Streak SRM-6, you're not going to be uh, using Streak SRM-6 ammo for practice. You're going to be using uh, just regular SRM-6. And then we are going to calculate the costs for that ammo, right? Spare parts cost. This is based on the tonnage of the unit that... We are, uh, that's written over here, right? So if it's 20 ton locust, it's going to have a certain spare parts cost for that. Every Everything is going to need spare parts. Uh, every, you know, vehicle or, that you're using, including drop ships and jump ships. And that's where these spare part costs can get really, really absurdly expensive, right? Um, <clears throat> so we'll be doing all that calculation later. Uh, then we come to fuel tons. Uh, we have to calculate the fuel tons for every single unit in the game. If it's a mech, that's super easy. Mechs don't use any fuel, uh, or their fuel is negligible. Basically, they have fusion reactors that are uber efficient, and you can fuel them with water. So uh, mechs are super easy. Other things are not super easy. All the tanks with internal combustion engines, things like uh, battle armor with jump jets, right? And uh, <laughs> we're going to have to find out, you know, not only how many tons does it use in peacetime operations, but what kind of fuel is that? And then figure out the cost of that fuel, right? Uh, so yes, that comes all later. Then we move on to personnel here. Personnel, if it's one, if it's one mech like a locust here, you're gonna have one mech warrior here, right? If you have twenty scorpion tanks, you're gonna have uh, however many people it's going to take to drive twenty scorpion tanks, and it's more than twenty because. I believe Scorpions, I don't know how many people, I think two per tank. I'm not exactly sure. Um, if you have administrators, right, you're going to say, how many administrators do you have here? Uh, tech teams uh, also, you know, and you're going to also distinguish whether they're an officer or just enlisted uh, because that will make a difference to their salary. What also makes a difference to their salary is the amount of ex experience that they have, right? <clears throat> and so in this column, we have to uh, calculate the salaries for everybody in our um, in our force, in our mercenary company, or not necessarily mercenary company, but we'll get into that. Uh, and then you come to the totals, and basically by... Um, yeah, adding up the ammo cost, uh, spare part cost, fuel cost, and salaries, uh, you're going to come to a monthly peacetime operation cost, right? And uh, that will that can change throughout the game as you gain more mech warriors or units or whatever, and or lose some, and yeah, so. How do we start? What's the first part of building a force? And the first part of building a force is actually a lot of the first stuff is stuff that is not written on here. We don't actually even start writing on here until we start buying equipment. And there's a lot of things that we need to do before we start buying equipment. And for example, we need to figure out what kind of force are we going to be? Um, and there are three to choose from. You can be a government force, you can be a mercenary force, and you can be a pirate force. Uh, essentially, the differences are uh, government forces will always have steady uh, 
employment. They'll always have something to do. Um, but they don't have very much freedom to choose in what they do. Uh, uh, mercenaries, on the other hand, uh, are employable, and that actually <clears throat> depends on what your mercenary reputation is, and that's something else for later. Um, <laughs> if we get into that, um, probably not today. This is uh, probably going to be a series of videos, by the way. Anyways, and then – so then a pirate force is uh, the basically the opposite of a government force. It's basically unemployable, so it's very likely that when you roll for missions that you will get nothing. It's po possible that you'll get something, something like a covert operation from a company or something along those lines. Uh, but therefore, pirates basically just choose their targets. That's what pirates do instead of looking for employment – they choose targets to raid and go, uh, you know, raid different bases or cities or what have you, and they get to decide. So the, basically, the pirates have full freedom to decide what they want to do whenever they want to do, uh, but it's they're going to have a hard time with things like spare parts and getting uh, enough ammo and uh, – yeah, so on and so forth. Whereas governments are going to have a lot easier time getting spare parts and new mechs and blah, 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 blah. Uh, but that all comes into like when you're – that comes much, much later. After you've built your whole force and then you want to actually start the campaign, which isn't what this – just to clarify, this video is going to be about building the force. Okay, it's not going to be – this series is going to just cover uh, building your force and figuring out your peacetime operating costs. How to get missions and run a campaign, that's that's a whole different set of <laughs> uh, videos that are going to need their own series. And I might get to that eventually. Um, so, yeah, just so that we know what we're doing, um, what this video series is about, yeah, force creation and how we do that. So – Yes, first thing you got to choose is a mercenary force. And as you can see, there's nowhere to write that on this um, page, but that's why, for example, I like to make my own spreadsheets, and I can choose a force type. And I am actually going to choose a government force type. Because that's what I want. And, of course, force name, bad pens, business, oh, should be a capital B. Uh, yeah, so go ahead, choose. If you want to know more about the differences between uh, government and mercenary and pirate factions, then you should go and read in Campaign Operations. Uh, it's in the first step of creating a force. And you can read all about it there. Uh, the next thing is choosing your faction and your era. So uh, if you're a government force, you must choose a faction to belong to, uh, obviously. You know, who, what kind of government force doesn't belong to anybody? Um, if you are a mercenary force or a pirate force, you're going to be choosing a faction from which most of your equipment is coming from, right? So this is going to um, decide which, which mechs, you know, are available to which factions and when. Uh, and it is, if you're a mercenary force or a pirate force, uh, you are allowed to choose too diverse, you know, to pin down any one house, right? Um, <clears throat> and say, I'm just not, we're just from the inner sphere in general. <clears throat> also, uh, I didn't mention this, if you are a mercenary or a pirate force, you cannot be clan uh, associated. Clans uh, hate mercenaries, clans hate pirates, um, and so no clan force is willingly going to be a mercenary or a pirate force. 
throughout the your gameplay if you start as a clan force um right you have to start as a government but throughout play you know whatever however the gm wants to do it a clan force could become a mercenary force or they could even become pirates throughout gameplay but you for starting clans are government so i need to choose a faction because i'm a government type um and I'm going to choose my favorite, the Magistracy of Canopus. So I'm going to make a government force for the Magistracy of Canopus. Um, then uh, you have to choose your era. And your era is going to have pretty big impacts on... Um, uh, yeah, what you can get, obviously. You know, if you're in an early, if you're in 3025, then there's a lot of equipment and stuff that is absolutely not available to you. If you're, um, you know, you can choose a Star League era to start in, and each one of them, it <clears throat> it will change how easy it is to get different units, and especially things like dropships and jump ships. If you want a dropship and jump ship, and you want to roll for that dropship and jump ship, uh, I believe the best eras are like Star League eras. So uh, some of the earlier eras, and you're going to get a big minus to what you need to roll to be able to get a jump ship. In times like, uh, you know, 3025 to 30. I, I don't know, 40 or whatever it is, um, you get a big, you get like negatives to getting things like drop ships um, and jump ships. Anyways, uh, on my, whoops, on my spreadsheet here, uh, I have all of the eras and they are separated into inner sphere and clan eras. You can see they start all the way back in 2100 to 2412 and make their way up through the ages this one um right 30 2901 to 3049 is like the succession wars era um then you have the clan invasion era uh and then you have this, whatever comes after the clan invasion, what is it, the jihad? Oh, I can't can't say those words. Oops. Uh, blah, 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 blah. The, the, the word of Blake stuff, right? Can't say that word on YouTube. <clears throat> uh, I, was, I, was act I, did, I, I didn't say that word. I was saying jihappy. I, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> Never mind. I didn't say anything. Um, uh uh, yeah, and then you get then there's the Dark Age, right? And in the Dark Age, it's going to be more difficult again to get things like dropships and jump ships. Uh, for me, what do I want? I want this era, 36 to 8, 30, 84. I like this era. Um, <clears throat> you get a lot of really cool equipment. You can play with all the big stuff, and it's not that difficult to get drop ships and jump ships. <clears throat> and another thing, uh, what type of force you're going to be, I think, is also going to affect. So government forces have a uh, easier time, I believe, getting certain things. I can't tell you everything. I don't know everything off the top of my head. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you when we get to that. <clears throat> all right. So... Uh, I've chosen my faction. I've chosen my era. Uh, the next thing to do, which still is not written anywhere here, is find out uh, your money. Right? You got to work out how much money you want. <clears throat> and you can do this in one of two ways. You can roll on a table in campaign operations and have it be a hundred percent random right uh or as they tell you in the book just choose what you know how much money you want to start with uh because like 
you probably have an idea of how big your force is, wants to be, uh, and so on. And so just rolling randomly isn't always going to cut it. You don't need to roll randomly um, on here uh, t to find out. For me, however, I will show you. Ba, 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 ba. There is, so yes, in uh, campaign operations, there is a table. I can't remember exactly which page it on, it's on. It's about, I don't know, page 10 or so. Uh, and uh, it's going to have a bunch of different numbers that you roll on it with, I think, 3D6 to find out a base starting budget, right? And uh, that starting budget is actually going to be... Um, altered by a number of factors and tables in the book. Um, oh, I didn't, I also forgot um, back in the era, if you're a clan force, you have different eras, right? And here you can start to see what the different eras will do. So where, what are good eras, what are poor eras, the worst era by far is um, clan era 2800 to 2840. This is when they just left the inner sphere and they're having a really hard time uh, with everything. Things aren't good. So uh, you get a modifier of times 0.5 to your starting budget. Whereas you can see, I think the best era the most prosperous, I believe, this would have been the golden age of the um, Star League, <clears throat> I believe, uh, before the su Succession Wars and all that. Um, and, <clears throat> yeah, you get a big, big bonus to your starting budget because times were good, everybody was wealthy, and it was... Reasonable to have a big force with lots of money, right? So uh, you can go on to campaign operations into – let me just uh, – wait a moment here. Okay. No, sorry. I just needed to um, look at something. Wow. That, what you just saw, um, was the basic budget table on page 11. That's all I really wanted to show to figure out what page is the basic budget table on. It is on page 11 in campaign operations. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so you just roll a 3D6, find out what your starting budget is going to be. And this is going to be something, if you're working with this sheet, that you're just going to have to write somewhere right another piece of paper or whatever here what's this oops no don't print anything please uh i rolled on the table and i got 120 million bucks right uh and i've made a fancy spreadsheet here that does uh, some calculating for me over here. And I have to put in which era I am in. And I did say 3068-3084. Should actually have this era simply equal that. Can I do that? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, so, era, oh no, I can't do that. I'm an idiot. That's not the way my spreadsheet works. I should explain how my spreadsheet works because I don't even remember, uh, but I do. Um, that's why I have these era tables. You don't write which era you're in. That's not going to help with anything. Uh, instead, if you're using my spreadsheet, this only applies if you're using my spreadsheets. And this applies to all kinds of different these uh, tables and things that I got. Um, 
in this, you're going to put which era you're in, which corresponds to a number here, which is number nine. So here I put in number nine, and that is going to automatically uh, change what my budget is. It's going to say, oh yeah, okay, times two. Um, so it doubled my doubled my starting budget because of the era I am in. And if you were in this era, if I were to put here an 11 instead, it would cut it in half, right? That's the way that my spreadsheet works. Um, if you want to use my spreadsheet, you absolutely don't have to do that because these calculations are not complicated whatsoever. You can just as easily look at this and say, oh, double it, that's 24th, uh, or uh, 240 million. Right, so what did I say, era nine? Yeah, uh, faction type. Then you have to come over to this table, right? And these tables, these tables are all just from the book. They're taken directly from the book. You will find these tables in the book, and then you can just do all of these calculations by hand, right? And uh, so in this table, it's telling you, uh, are you a superpower, are you a major power, are you a minor power, independent state, small state, or independent mercenary or pirate, right? And so, uh, for example, there are actually only three superpowers in the Battletech universe. There was the Terran Hegemony, there was the Star League, and there was, um, uh, what did they call it, the Federated Commonwealth? So if your faction is one of those three, then they are superpowers, and you will multiply your budget again by 1.5, giving you even more money, right? Uh, my, If you're a major power, that's any of the five houses basically is a major power. So the Capellans, the Fed Sons, the Draconis Combine, the Lion Commonwealth, and the Capellans all count as major powers, and therefore you would then multiply your starting budget by 1.2. Uh, minor powers are uh, the major periphery states. So, for example, Magistracy of Canopus or the Torian Cordat are minor powers of the Outward Alliance uh, or the Rimworld Alliance, I believe, also would be uh, minor powers and then you would simply multiply it by one, which does nothing. It would stay the same. Uh, independent state, small state. So something like uh, St. Ives Compact or uh, probably the Wrestlehag Dominion. Um, also, you know, these, these, these kind of the, the Duchy of Endurian would be an independent or a small state. Um, then you would multiply it by 0.8. Um, so you they're they're poorer, smaller, and right. And then there's simply independent merc uh, mercenary or pirate. Basically, you don't have a faction. You don't have, if you don't have a starting faction, then simply multiply it by one or simply do nothing. Um, since I'm a minor power, I can put a three in here, but that's actually going to do nothing because that is multiplies it by one. Uh, then finally you come over to your wealth, the wealth table, and there's only two. Are they wealthy? Are they poor? So this, this needs a little bit more research into your faction to understand it. They don't actually give really good examples in... Uh, campaign operations, they only give you a few. For example, the Capella Confederation is considered a poor major state, right? Um, but it's it's kind of relative because I'm playing as the Magistracy of Canopus, um, which is smaller and poorer than the Capellan uh, Confederation, obviously, but for a minor power, it's not considered to be an especially poor minor power, right? So the Capellans, all they would have gotten a multi, 
you know, you would have multiplied it by 1.2, but here then you would have to multiply it by 0.8. A wealthy faction is like the Lyrans, right? The Lyran, Lyran Commonwealth, or if you're, yeah, they would be considered especially wealthy so you can get even more money. Uh, but since the magistracy of Canopus is not considered especially wealthy or especially poor, um, then I'm just simply going to leave that blank, which gives me a final budget of twenty no, uh, 240 million bucks. And this is something that you're going to have to um, record somewhere. And... Uh, to tell you the truth, I think I might have a little too much money. <laughs> I, I, I actually don't really want to build such a big um, uh, mercenary company or a government force, actually, in this case. Um, but this is – I'm just doing this to as an example, right? This isn't my real – this isn't my actual uh, mercenary company, and I may go and change this or not. It doesn't really matter. So this is how you find out the starting budget. You have to roll on the table. You then have to uh, modify it for your era. You have to modify it for your faction type, and you have to modify it possibly for whether your faction is especially wealthy or especially poor. Okay, so uh, just a moment. I need to pause. All right, I am back. And now, finally, do, 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 do. whoops, I keep showing. See, I keep going. I keep opening up campaign operations to find out what the next thing is uh, and then and then accidentally show it. I don't really want to show too much of that book um, here. I think that was okay. Um, so now we get to actually buying stuff, getting stuff. And, um, like, just like, uh, determining your budget, uh, there are two ways to go about this. Uh, you can simply choose the things that you want to have <clears throat> because people like to do that, right? You don't want to have to roll to see if you get it. And so they do tell you in the book, uh, if you want to just choose what mechs or units or whatever you have and just say that you have them, then by all means do that. However, there is a way to do it in the book uh, more randomly. And I've built another page like this, the acquisition calculator. Right Here it is. And you don't need to have an acquisition calculator. this It's not that difficult just to figure this stuff out, uh, pen and paper. But if you're using my spreadsheet, which oops, you can download in the description, as I said before, I know I repeat myself. Um, yeah, this is how it works. And this will also explain, you know, how to do this just by hand. Uh, it's 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 not all that diff difficult. So I say, okay, I want a unit. I want to see if I can get a unit. Um, this is going, if you want to do it like this, it's going to take a little bit of um, research on your part to find out some of this information, these modifiers. <sighs> Sorry about that. Uh, this first table is the base number. And this is pretty, so a light, the first thing, light battle mech or aerospace fighter or any satellite. Your base number to get the unit is going to be a four, right? So uh, let's imagine I want to get a Locust 1E, right? And so that is a light battle mech. I, in my table, Write a one here because that corresponds to uh, row one. Um, then you have to decide how much experience the person driving that mech gets. In the rules for doing this in campaign operations, when you get the unit, you get the pilot 
with the unit. All right. And so uh, you have an experience table. If you want a uh, elite pilot uh, to pilot your uh, mech or unit or whatever, you're going to have to add a plus five to your roll, right? So the base roll is a four, right? Light battle mech or aerospace fighter, or what they mean is light battle mech or light aerospace fighter, not any aerospace fighter, um, I do believe. Uh, or, or any satellite. Um, yeah, the base number is going to be four. I say, oh, I want my mech warrior to be elite. Then I'm going to have to add a five, bringing it up to a nine. Let's so in that that corresponds to row four. I put in experience four. I want an elite pilot. This spreadsheet will do that for you. It changes it to a nine. So now I actually need to roll a nine to see if I get that unit. All right, but there's uh there are available availability modifiers to these things. So this is where we need to come down here and look at if we need to add even more. Uh, ah, sorry, I keep doing that. Uh, numbers to our role. So for example, clan equipment for non-clan force after 3070, add a three. Tech. E and F equipment for non-clan, non-com star forces between 2860 and 3040. So this is uh, one of the reasons that I picked the era that I did. Uh, get me out of this early succession era, succession words era, um, because it's a lot harder to get... Uh, Tech E and F equipment. Now, how do you find out what <laughs> um, what tech level uh, your what? How do I know? You know, like ugh, how do I find this? Um, and this is where you know some research is going to be done. And for that, oops, um, I really like to use Mega Mech Lab. Um, so we'll just click load existing unit. If you don't know Mega Mech Lab, it is a free, unbelievably useful resource for Battletech. I would highly suggest getting the whole suite, which comes with Mega Mech, which allows you to actually play Battletech games. Mega Mech Lab, which allows you to basically gives you all the information about any mech that you need and is highly, highly useful for what we are going to be doing now. Uh, and then it gives, there's also Mega Mech HQ, which allows you to run a whole campaign. Um, and actually will do everything that I'm telling you here way easier <laughs> and like automatically. So you don't have to roll or anything. Uh, it's a really, really great program. Um, anyways, what do I want? I'm looking for a locust, right? And I know there's a locust 1E. And since I see that it is in the Inner Sphere Introductory Box Act, um, I can see that the tech rating is uh, not going to be E or F um, in my era. Uh, here is the tech rating. It is rated E. Um, at some point, these tech ratings, okay, hold on a moment. Yeah. So just have to go, um, uh, as far as I can tell, that's, um, like the, the, the dark age. And this would be the word of Blake time. Uh, this would be the succession era time. And these would be like, um, what do you call it? The Star League era. Um, so I'm in this. It is Tech D. So that does not apply. Uh, first Star League equipment for Clan Force. Uh, 
So if you are a clan force and it is first Star League equipment, uh, you actually get a minus two to your roll to get it because the clans were able to get that stuff quite easily, right? And then you come into uh, this one, cross-faction, acquiring another faction's exclusive equipment, including includes clan acquisition of inner sphere equipment, right? Um, finding out whether your unit is um, uh, cross-faction, some other faction's exclusive equipment, um, You one of the best uh, resources for that is, of course, the master unit list. And... All you have to do is go to the units. We'll type locust. And I have already here the locust 1E. And then it tells you availability throughout uh, the eras, right? Uh, da, 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 da. And my era is... Ba, 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 ba. What is my era? <laughs> I keep forgetting what I... Where is it? It's here. No, it is here. 3068, 3084. 3068. What am I doing? I have so many tabs and things open. 3068. Yeah, so uh, this era. Oh, and at this point, uh, the Locust 1E was a uh, Capellan Confederation... Uh, uh, unit. Now, if you do a lot of research and so on, you'll find that in this era, the Capellans and the Magistracy of Canopus are really close. They're actually allies um, in this era. So, it's kind of this this part's kind of you know up to you a little bit is this it uh specifically if you want to say oh this is a specifically a capellan confederation uh unit in this era then you're going to have to add uh this plus two but for me i would say well they're allies and they actually trade a lot of uh, equipment and actually most of the mechs that ma the magistracy gets at this point I do believe are uh, Capellan so I would say no this is not this one uh, acquiring another faction exclusive equipment um, does not apply to the Locust 1E for the magistracy of Canopus in the era that I am playing that's you know and it's up to me and it's up to you uh, how you how strict you want to be with these kind of things. Um, if I said it was exclusive uh, to them, then uh, I would have to add a plus two, which would bring my roll up to an 11, right? And on my spreadsheet here, I have several, I have three available ability modifier uh, sections, which... Just means you can, you know, it can be multiple of these things. So you can put them all in, which will change it. Uh, in this, in my case, for the Locust 1E, uh, I don't think I need any of these availability modifiers. It isn't clan equipment. It isn't tech E or F. Uh, and that wouldn't apply to me anyways, because I'm in, uh, in the era 3068. So I'm afterwards, so it really, that doesn't apply to me. Anyway, um, it isn't first Star League equipment for a clan force. I'm not a clan force anyways. And I wouldn't say that it is uh, acquiring another faction's exclusive equipment. So I can simply leave all of those blank. I can roll my dice. Um, and if I roll a nine or better, I will according to the rules, have a Locust 1E with an elite uh, pilot, which is which is pretty nice. Um, 
Now, if I roll and I get a 7 or anything below 9 uh, and I don't get this, uh, you don't get this unit. What you can do, according to the rules, is roll for the same unit with a lower uh, skill level or a different skill level than what you rolled for in the first place, right? And um, that changes, right? Now I only need a six. And, you say, and if you say, well, I already rolled a seven, no, 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 no. You got to roll again. Now you have to roll a six. Shh. Roll a six. Oh, my God, I only got a two. I can roll again for regular, and I can roll again for a green pilot. If, you know, I don't get, if I do all of that, um, and I never managed, right, to get it, uh, if I can't roll a two, for whatever reason, in this case, it's impossible not to get the unit. Obviously, you can't roll lower than a U with uh, two with two uh, d six. Um, but if it's a bigger unit and you don't get the unit, then you don't get the unit. You can uh, you can roll for a different variant of the unit and then go through all the steps again. So you can find, oh, I didn't get a locust one e. I can go and get a locust. Uh, uh, one V maybe or a five M and and roll for that unit right, but <coughs> you have to roll each time separately, right? <clears throat> Let's just say oh I didn't roll a nine but uh, then I need a six, uh, so oh okay yeah I did get a veteran locust. And what that would mean is now you come over onto your T, O, and E sheet and you can write locust, one, E. And here I can write they are a veteran. Oops, I <laughs> keep pressing. <coughs> uh, keep pressing enter. Anyways. Uh, yeah, so Locust 1E, Veteran. Uh, then go on to the next unit that you want, right? Um, uh, let's say I want, um, I want, I want a Mad Cat, <laughs> right? So what's that? A heavy, that's a heavy battle mech. That's going to be a six as my base roll, Right? That's in row three. So here in unit type, I'll put a three, which changes this already to an eight for getting a veteran pilot. Let's say I wanted an, el oh, no. uh, an elite pilot, right? Then uh, to be able to get a mad cat is going to be an 11. Um, that's definitely not going to happen because... Uh, Clan equipment for non-clan force after 3070, right? Before 3070, basically, it's impossible to get clan equipment for non-clan force. But I'll say, you know, my my I'm specifically starting in the year 3070 or 3072 or whatever, right? Now, I need, this is clan equipment for a non-clan force. I definitely need that modifier, uh, and that is modifier number one. And already, you can see, that's impossible. I, there's no way I can get that. So, what could you do? I can um, change the experience. I could say, oh, what if I just want a regular? Then you're going to need to roll a nine or better. So, it's not impossible. If you want a green person, it's even going to be easier. I could get... If I can roll a seven, I can get a Mad Cat with a green pilot um, for my magistracy force, right? So you're really not um, limited to only getting uh, units that are, you know, available to your uh, faction at the time. Um, 
But it is going to make it a lot easier because you're not going to have all these availability modifiers. And if you want to do that, if you just want to go see, okay, what units uh, does my faction have? I can. It's really easy. Uh, this is probably the best way to actually do it. Come over to your faction, whatever it might be. Choose the era that you are um, in. And it's going to tell you, right, if I wanted to get a Locust 1V, uh, then it's definitely, you know, that is, I don't need any available ability modifiers for pretty much any of the units on this page, right? Uh, so you got to go and do that with all the different things that you want. And that's going to apply to mechs and uh, aerospace fighters and uh, infantry, battle armor, um support vehicles, everything you can, you know, tanks, whatever they might be, they're all, they're all listed here somewhere. So you find it, you find the base number, right? You look at the availability tables, you decide which ones apply, you add those numbers or subtract those numbers. And then, um, then comes the, uh, uh, the cost table. And this is going to, you know, how much is it going to cost me? So that locust, we can go through it. Is it clan equipment for non-clan force? This doesn't apply to me because I'm in the year 3071. If I'm in here, it's only going to cost me four times as much. So whatever that mad cat costs, it's going to cost four times more, right? That's really, that's really... um. I'm not going to, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that mad, well, I mean, whatever, I have 120 million bucks, I can buy whatever I want, right? Uh, how much does a mad cat even cost? I wonder. That's something you can find out here. Actually, let's go, it's actually called a timber wolf. No. Timber wolf, and let's just say I wanted the prime. You can find out how much it's going to be. Right here, using Mega Mech Lab. Uh, so if I wanted to get that um, this Mad Cat for my force, I'm going to have to pay four times that twenty-four million. Uh, that's pretty much my entire budget. What is twenty-four million times four? Twenty-four times four is ninety-six. So it would cost me upwards of ninety-six million bucks. Uh, to get that. And I only start with 120 million bucks. So if you look at that, oh, maybe, maybe you don't want to get that Mad Cat, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> what else? Clan equipment. So yeah, that's uh, Tech E. This is another thing. Tech E equipment for non clan, non Comstar forces between this and that because I'm actually in the year 3071. That will not apply to me. Uh, it, then. Just generally, if it is tech E or F-rated equipment, regardless of what era you're in, you're going to have to multiply that by either 1.1 or 1.25 to find out the cost of your equipment. Once you have all of the costs, if I were to do this on my sheet, it would look like this. I got a Locust 1E. And on my spreadsheet, I have a lot of different things uh, you can that aren't on the regular T, O, and E sheet. For example, a space to say what kind of unit it is. I'm pretty sure I have everything covered. I put everything that was in the book. Um, I also put the tonnage, which is something that is not in, um, not on the default. T, O, and E sheet, there is no space for tonnage. There's not a... Uh, but that is important. We, You will want to know the tonnage because um, you're going to have to find out spare parts, right? And uh, the, you're going to want to say whether well, it's a veteran. Tech team, that doesn't come up yet. That's what is their tech team going to be, but that comes later. And uh, here is the cost, right? And 
I wanted, I forgot what it was. Locust, 1E, it's a pretty cheap unit, right? 1.574, 200. 1.574, million bucks. Um, it's not tech E rated or F rated, so I don't have to modify it. It's not clean equipment. I don't have to modify that at all, right? And here are the different cost modifiers, actually, right? can put that there uh, but I don't remember why I yeah ah right it goes in if I put it here then it's gonna change the equipment cost it doesn't change the equipment cost uh, my spreadsheet is wrong and I'm going to have to fix that but it really doesn't matter and that should change what the price is here, but it doesn't, but I'll fix that. Maybe I'll fix that now. All right, I fixed it. Uh, yeah, now this will multiply these two numbers uh, for you if you're using the spreadsheet. And the equipment cost is reading everything in this column. Uh, da, 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 da. So, yeah, then what else can I write already? I can write its role. Um, what did I have? Oh, I got to go back and find out what is its role. And why do we want to know its role? So unit role is a scout. So here... I can come down to scout, right? And um, you might want to record all this information um, because that brings us to the next part. Once you've got everybody, all of your equipment uh, figured out and what you want to be using, uh, you, the next step is going to be uh, creating formations, and formations is really cool. Uh, formations can be fun. Um, uh, if you want to know about formations, then you got to go into campaign operations, and I'll tell you what page that is on. Yeah, so, uh, da, 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 where is it? I am going to show you a little bit out of campaign operations, just a little bit, just to uh, get an understanding of what a formation is and what a formation can do. I'm not going to be showing you all of the formations. There are a whole bunch of them in the book. Uh, they start at page 60 or 61 in this. Yeah, no, start at page 60. Um, and your the the what formation you're going to be using is going to have uh, different requirements. So, for example, for an assault lance, um, you can read all this, but the requirements, at least three units in a basic assault lance must be heavy or larger, and the formation may not include light units. Okay, so I know that my locust that I've rolled for and have uh, cannot be, it won't be part of this assault unit, but maybe I'll get some more units and put uh, together an assault lance. Anyways, all units in the assault lance must have at least 135 armor points, so Locust is definitely out, and at least 75% of the units in the formation must be able to do at least 25 points of damage at a range of 7 hexes. So you're going to have to go and do a lot of research and figure out whether they can do that much damage at a range of seven hexes. But probably if they're going to be big, big units, uh, then they probably will. Uh, an assault lance must also must contain at least one unit with the juggernaut roll or two units with the sniper roll. Uh, then it says ideal roll juggernaut. And what that means is uh, you can forego all of these um, 
you know, all of these requirements uh, you don't have to pay attention to. If every unit in this lance has the role of juggernaut, then they can all just be an assault lance, right? Um, and then, so you get, what do you get for having an assault lance? You get, at the beginning of play, the assault lance's controlling player must choose either the demoralizer or the multitasker special pilot abilities. And you have to go to page 74 and 78 to find out what those do, okay? Uh, at the beginning of each turn, the player may designate up to one or two units in the assault lands to receive the chosen ability for the duration of the turn. The ability can be switched to other units in the formation each turn, but the special pilot ability chosen at the start of play cannot be changed during the scenario. Okay? Uh... So yeah, you you have to choose either demoralizer or multitasker, and you can give that to one or two people in your lance, and you can change that. Who gets that every turn? So that's one of the formations that you can do. Um, there's a whole bunch of them, and they all have different requirements. Other some have absolutely no require it says no requirements whatsoever. Um, some have very strict requirements, like uh, your it ha this unit must have your commander, or at least some like a command lance has to have your commander in it. Or, well, actually, it doesn't have to. But go and read that yourself. That's not that's not important. This is just so. Yeah, you can figure out your formations, and if we come over here you'll see there is no place to put formations. This is uh, something else that you're going to have to um, figure out all by yourself, right? Uh, you're going to have to write that down somewhere yourself, what for which units are in which uh, lances, what formations they are, and so on and so forth. There's nowhere on here to write that. Uh, okay. So, um, this is probably uh, what your um, T.O. and E. should look like now. As you can see, this person has uh, – this is one of the examples taken out of the book. This is a picture from the book. Uh, they have all their units. They have a couple of Thunderbolts. They have a couple of Grasshoppers, a bunch of Bulldogs, uh, Foot Laser Platoon. I believe that is um, a bunch of pack rats. Those are those are a type of tank, or you know, it's like a wheeled vehicle, and a couple of aerospace fighters. And all of their experience is regular on this sheet. And so this is about uh, where we are um, in creating our force. And I think this is where I'm going to leave it for today. And the next part is going to be uh, it's going to be determining your ammo, determining your um, spare parts and fuel, and then personnel and salaries. Also, uh, tech teams, also administrators. Maybe I'll be able to get that into one more video and we'll make this like a two-part series. I really don't know, uh, but I don't want to make each video especially long. So uh, that's where I'm going to end it right now. Uh, thanks for watching this and come back for part two when it's ready. Uh, see you later. Bye-bye.